Yeah, bury that pole, bury that pole. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, folks, I'm Dieter Melhorn. On this trip, well, we're going to see where the winter catfish are. Are they deep, shallow, or somewhere in between? All right, guys, so here's the plan. I'm out on the lake today. It's a pretty nice day. It's uh, clear, a little bit of a breeze, about five miles per hour. So I'm going to be doing some drifting. I may anchor, but I got a feeling I'm just going to cover water, try to figure out what's going on with the fish. Water's uh, 46 degrees, so it's not exactly warm. It's not as cold as it gets, but it's cold. So I'm going to cover some water. Six rods in the water, the red ones. Red rods and red reels. They got chicken, strawberry chicken. The other one's got white perch on them. Uh, sand tea rigs, covering water, dragging slow. We're gonna start out in a creek mouth in about 30 feet of water. See what's here, work our way to a river channel. If we start to pick up a pattern, we're gonna sit on it and uh, try to work it. So let's see what we can get. All right, guys, I think I got one on the spinning rod. This is my new one on my carnivore. Reel, is he there? Nope, I think he pulled off. Oh, no, he is there. I think he's there. Yep, he's there. He's coming up the boat. Yeah, This is that new carnivore spinning reel I'm trying out from PC Fun. Uh, putting it through the paces. I know a lot of you guys like using spinning tackle over bait casters. Affordability and ease of operation, and I understand that. That's what I got on the boat for. This one's red. That means chicken. Red rods, chicken. Got chicken, strawberry chicken on this side of the boat. Let's see what we got. Ain't a monster, but we got us a fish. Hey, say simmer, simmer. Oh, he's throat hooked. He is throat hooked. Got it, finally. Oh, dang. I'll drop him in the boat. Some days nothing works. Slimy sucker. All right, guys, this is craziness, confusion, gloom, despair, agony on me. Got a fish, that one's on chicken. Let me get it rebaited and chuck it back out there. I think I got another one. Yep, right there on that rod. It's the beauty of circle hooks, guys. You don't have to sit here and go scrambling and going crazy to get to these rods. Get this one back out. We'll talk about that reel in a minute. Boom, get that one going. Let's catch another fish. Was a go boom hooked up, hooked up, hooked up, baby hooked up. Again, red rod, these BM silver cattle eat rods. They got the chicken, everything red, red rods, red reels. That's my chicken. Easy way to keep up. On the port side, port wine is red making this easy for you guys dragging through here i'm on a big flat this creek i'm in this is the mouth of a creek before it gets to the river channel it's big it's wide pretty flat there's a couple of ditches through here I decided to come here because i got a west wind it's blowing straight out here fish near here yesterday got a few fish it was kind of a short drag with the wind the way it was so trying something a little different today Let's see if we can get some fish in the boat a little bigger fish not a monster but bigger may warrant a bugger grip pretty fish come on some 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 boom got him that one is hooked up much better. That one, bad place for the pliers. Bad place. Bad place. Bad place. Oh, come back here. Come back here. Come back here. That's a mud. 
Nice fish. Good fish there. See you guys. Get him back alive. Boom. All right, pal, about 20 minutes into that first drift, I got set up, got the baits out, and uh, doubled up two fish. Uh, one a little bit bigger than the other, but uh, two fish. So I want to keep pulling through here again. This is still right here in the middle of this uh, creek channel. It's pretty much a big flat through here. Uh, water doesn't really change that much uh, out in the middle. It's pretty much just a big flat 30 foot area. Get over toward the bank. There's some humps and points. I may try working that. We'll see. But uh, two of them in the boat fairly quickly, quickly both on chicken. And uh, we'll keep covering some water here, see if we can uh, dial us in a little bit of a pattern. Planer! Let's see if it pops again. Go, Planer. Go, Planer. Go, Planer. Boom! <laughs> I love it. Made a long drag. I actually went back and reset. Um, that last fish I caught did not go down. He stayed on top of the water. And uh, I gave him about 15 minutes. Usually it takes a fish about 15 minutes to go down. And sure enough, I got over here to the river channel. I said, you know what? I'm going to go check on that fish. Got everything pulled up. Boom. He took a dive. So he's okay. Uh, sometimes he'll do that. Uh, it's rare that that happens. It's one of the reasons I torpedo my fish into the water nose first so that they go down. Usually all it takes is them getting a couple of feet below the surface and uh, they're fine. And uh, what happens is they get the air in their air bladder. It's holding their head on top of the water. Their tail can't get no traction, so to speak. I'm gonna pull this planer board off the wrong way. And, uh, but yeah, their tail can't get any traction. So basically, uh, they're kind of stuck on top of the water. If you get them torpedoed into the water and their tails in the water, they can swim. And even with some air in the air bladder, they can get down a few feet. And that is usually all it takes to allow them to equalize. So long pull here, no fish. I actually added two rods. I actually added a couple of down lines. Uh, I've got them about three or four cranks off the bottom. So I was gonna tell you all about this earlier. This is that PC fun reel I'm trying out. I've got a couple of spinning rods on the boat. I know a lot of you guys want to use spinning rods and that's cool, nothing wrong with them. I actually think they are a very good rod to, or a good, very good reel to fish with. Put a lot of drag on the fish and uh, they're affordable and you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, backlash and all that kind of stuff. So there's advantages and disadvantages. Let's get this fish in the boat. to any of them hopefully he looks like he's hooked pretty good boom yeah around here there we go yeah there's advantages and disadvantages to all of them there you go nice fish pretty fish let's go eat one that'd be a good eater right there he's getting to get back boom but yeah there's disadvantages and advantages to both reels the one cool thing about this one is, is a bait feeder which is similar to almost having clickers on a bait caster. You can flip this lever right here, boom, and line can come off of the rod. So you know, it's got a brake on it, so it's free spooling off. Then you can adjust it with this back here. That's how hard it comes off. Crank it, it goes into gear, boom, you're not pulling the line off. So one of the cool things about that, hi right, Friel, I'll put you a link down in the description section if you wanna check it out. We're gonna get another piece of chicken on here. That was chicken, by the way, guys. Every fish has come on chicken so far. All right, guys, that's fish number four. Uh, I changed drift socks. I actually put my small one back out. Uh, the wind really laid down. We just got a little bit here going, maybe three or four miles an hour, but the wind has really, really, really laid down. I prefer a little stronger wind when I'm drifting. It seems to help with the bite for whatever reason. Don't, don't know why, but uh, anyway. Uh, Making a drag across here. Went a pretty good ways without catching a fish. Came across the river channel. That one appeared to be right on the edge. So kind of the way it's going here with the uh, wind. Uh, wind's kind of bringing me this way. I've got some current going down the lake. Very mild current this far down, but enough that you can feel it just a little bit. Uh, it's kind of pulling that way. So 
generally speaking you're going to get more current in the river channel once you get out of the river channel area you'll still have it but it won't be as strong and it doesn't play on the boat as much and that's kind of what's going on here so i'm going to come up out of the river channel and uh, make a move on across this flat and uh, see if there's uh see if there's some fish up here this is a long pull this will probably take an hour hour and 20 minutes to pull across here uh, and after that i'm going to make an adjustment and uh try a spot probably where i caught some fish the other day oh yeah bury that pole bury that pole oh yeah oh yeah bury that pole oh, that was one of my uh, suspended baits that i had about Wow, it's a bunch of fish right there. I'm gonna mark that. Uh, I had them about three cranks off the bottom. This is on the chicken side of the boat. It's FYI. The, uh, both red rods, it's just I've got it on the uh, port side. That's a decent bite. About 20 feet down. There's a bunch of fish stacked up right there on that channel ledge. I love vertical, catching fish vertical. What I mean by that is straight up and down underneath the boat. I just love watching those rods, bam, slam over. It's fun. This is not a big fish. You can imagine what a big one would do. Come here, sucker. You hook good enough? You hook good enough to make it? Oh, it's gonna be close on you. Oh, yeah. Ow. Pop loose in the boat. There we go. Come here, sucker. You slick little piggy. Here we go. Another one on chicken. On the full belly. Ow. Nose this one in. There's some fish down there. Nose this one in head first. Ooh. Well, folks, I decided to make a little run up the lake. I uh, made a long pull across through there. And I uh, ended up right at the bridge and decided to run up and make one more last pull up here. Uh, we got some water moving. Uh, there's some current. They're uh, moving some water through the lake. Not a lot. Where I'm at, I'm probably midway down the lake, so it's really not that profound. But I got wind going this way, current going that way. And uh, that was one of the interesting things back there, how the boat kind of, uh, you almost do a crab. I've got a small drift sock out to kind of slow me down but the current catches it and it's pulling it in whatever direction the current's going. And when you're in the river channel, there's actually more current there than there is up on these flats. So it's got kind of a pull to it there. So uh, it's one of the things I, I've said in my drifting videos is you gotta kind of uh, pay attention to that kind of stuff depending on what your conditions are. If you just got wind blowing in one direction, it's pretty easy, you kind of set it and forget it. But when you get uh, some current, especially if you're going one way, current's going the other, or it's going perpendicular to you, it can create all kinds of stuff. So that's where having a trolling motor in the water, which I'm getting ready to uh, drop in, and really help kind of getting the boat and keeping it under control. And having a remote also helps. Every boat's different; they all drift and troll kind of different. So you have to kind of figure out what works for you. So uh, sun's starting to go down, as you can see. That's what that big orange ball is. Uh, I'm gonna give it uh, a little while longer here to sunset and see if we can get one more. So far though, it's been horrendously slow and uh, don't know really what to attribute it to except I must be in the wrong place or something because just not a good bite. Uh, working some stuff on the sonar, but it's just not on fire today for whatever reason. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're gonna like. I'd watch that one. And then that one. No, no. Do do that one first, and then that one. I, I don't know. Just watch them both. They're both good. <laughs>